Hi world, it's uh, seven minutes past seven in the evening on Friday the 30th of June 2023. It's the last day of June. Tomorrow will be the halfway point of the year, although solstice is really the halfway point, but you know. Um, this video is going to be a bit different to normal. It's, it's quite a bit of rambling on my part, but, but stick with it because there's a few different stories here, but they're all going to come together at the end, or at least that's the intention. So stick with me. A few days ago, I was doing a in-person reading at a face-to-face -face level, as in I was sat next to a client. And I don't do that, really, these days. I live quite remotely. I've not done any face-to-face -face readings for quite a few years, but there was a case for this one. And I was dealing with a client... And they've known me a long time. I've worked with them well over 20 years. And I was suggesting that they consider making some quite radical changes in their lives. They're going undergoing some heavy Pluto and heavy Uranus transits. And I suggested some alternatives to them. And they looked at me and they said, but wait a minute. How do you get this stuff? Where does it come from? How do you know what's happening here? And I was able to look them in the eye. And because you're right next to someone, when you look them in the eye and you're, you're on that flow, you say to them, well, I don't know. It ju I just know this is right. And it's not a knowledge born of study, although study's a part of it. And it's not a knowledge born of certainty or even experience, although experience is part of it as well. It's a knowing. And I suppose knowing comes from the same root as the word knowledge. They both got K-N-O-W as the first part of it. And when I was, when he was saying to me, well, how do, how do you know this? How, how do you, where do you get this stuff from? I was like, well, just, I just know it. And it's not, that's, even that's not right. I am it. It is me. It flows through me. It's not mine. And he kind of got it. And that left me afterwards thinking, well, how does astrology actually work? And I just went, okay, well, maybe I'll never work that one out. It's just enough to know, to know that it does and that I'm good at it. And I'm very blessed and very fortunate. Great, okay. A week or two ago, and it may have been this week, it may have been last week, in my weekly teaching classes, which I'm sort of, yeah, for 60% of the way through this year now. And the, the students are getting less in number as we get to more advanced stuff, but they're getting more intelligent and they're, they're asking intelligent questions. One of the students said to me, well, look, she said, I, I know about the influence of the aspects now and I know the meaning of the signs and I know the meaning of the planets and I know the meaning of the houses, but there's a lot of information and it's just so complicated. I wish I could find an easy way of putting it together. And I just said, well, look, here's, here's a lovely way of wrapping it up in a nutshell. I said two things. I said, look, planets are energies. The signs of the zodiac show how that, plant, that energy manifests in you. The houses show how that energy manifests in the eyes of the outside world. And the aspects show how planets help and hinder each other. And that's a standard explanation at the most simple level. And she said, yeah, I get that. You've said that a number of times. Still don't quite get it. And I went, okay, think of a cake. The aspects are the cake. The planet, the, the signs of the zodiac that the planets and the aspects are in is the icing on the cake. It surrounds the body of the cake. It gives it a, a boundary, if you like. The houses of the zodiac are the packaging and the cardboard box and the wrapping that the cake is in. It's the interface with the outside world. And she went, ah, got it. That's really simplified it. I get it. And it was one of those light bulb moments. Someone very recently, I was having a good conversation with someone about artificial intelligence. And I said to me, 
do you think any do you think artificial intelligence will ever be able to do a horoscope reading like you do for example and i looked at them and i was like wow what a great question and i had to really think about this artificial intelligence can do anything it can deep fake a video it can deep fake an audio or an interview it can it can make anyone believe anything these days you know artificial intelligence can take over the world yeah right it probably could certainly artificial intelligence could write sun sign columns cuz you know that's not proper astrology and they could easily pretend to be famous people yeah sure but could artificial intelligence actually do a proper astrological reading and i thought to myself well wait a minute if you downloaded into artificial intelligence every single book that's ever been written on astrology so the ai would then know everything there is to know about the mechanics of astrology and about what planets and signs and houses and aspects all mean and it would it would understand the principle of synthesis and integration but could artificial intelligence actually do the reading itself and translate the chart into english and then make forecasts not predictions but forecasts and i had to come up with a conclusion no it couldn't for years and years decades people have said to me how do you actually do what you do so many of my clients say to me how do you actually do what you do and i say i don't know i really don't know it's not so it's not like astrology sometimes i say astrology speaks through me but i'm not a channel or a medium i'm i'm kind of not comfortable with that type of en- that type of terminology or energy but i don't see astrology as an it it's alive it has valence and life force and astrology chooses to work with people people don't work with astrology astrology works with people people don't find astrology astrology finds people so astrology will work through people and it certainly works with me most of the time if not all the time when i look at a chart i my eyes unfocus i don't really look at the rings i don't look at the signs or the houses i just unfocus my eyes and i look at the pattern its pattern recognition so could us artificial intelligence do that yes it could but could it draw significance from certain signs in certain houses in certain aspects with different strengths could it synthesize could it assimilate integrate could it balance i don't believe it could and the thing is most astrologers can't do that either or most so called astrologers can't do that either until they've been doing it one hell of a long time and they've got not only the knowledge of what they're doing but the experience and the confidence to be able to trust themselves in their unknowingness if i knew and could explain what it was i do when i do a reading and how i come to the conclusions i come to if i knew what i was doing i wouldn't do it because it would be logic and rational and easily explained and that would take the fun out of it i love not knowing what i do i told you it would be a weird video i love not knowing what i do because it keeps me guessing it keeps me questioning it keeps me searching This is why every time I do a new chart I learn something new. Could artificial intelligence do proper astrological readings? Not a chance. Because there's a little bit of magic there. 
Now, Arthur C. Clarke's second or third law said that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable to magic from magic. I get that. And to most people, astrology is hunkum, woo-woo, spooky, magical, load of rubbish. But those who have studied it extensively, those who are immersed in it, they are aware that it speaks in a kind of language of symbology that hits different parts of the brain to any other form of language. It speaks in metaphor with tinges of psychology and analogy. And it deals with meaning, not understanding. Subtle differences, but important ones. And could artificial intelligence really embrace that level of sophistication, eruditeness and magic? I don't think so. No. But there's a third, fourth part to this video. I started teaching. When I was a, started doing astrology in the 1970s, and I latched into it and I, saw, I looked at this stuff and I thought, wow, this is amazing. And I said, as early as the late 70s, very early 1980s, I said, if astrology were taught in schools, within two years, within two generations, we'd see an end to warfare, religious divide, gender divide, and we'd see a much more unified consciousness across the globe. We'd also see the end of nation states and religions and things like that because everyone would become more self-aware, self-conscious, psychologically stable. But everyone's going, yeah, but that's a dream. That's not going to happen. Then the internet happened. And then in the last few years, I find myself, courtesy of Zoom, teaching astrology. I've, I've, I've done three courses now, three or four year-long beginner's guides. And, and there's four or 500 students out there who have taken astrology classes with me. And yeah, a lot of them drop out after the first module or the first three modules. But some go on to the intermediate and a few go on to the advanced. Now, there's at least one group of astrologers out there now who learned their astrology through interacting with me. I didn't so much teach them, but they stuck with me and got it through osmosis. I'm not a teacher. But I, I help them understand things for themselves. And now they've gone on and a good they meet regularly and a half of them are out there doing readings and even getting paid for it, which is great. And there's some of this current course I'm teaching who are also going to go on and do the same. And the thing is, men, most of them are women, of course, because women are more comfortable with the intuitive, the spiritual, the magical, not exclusively, but 75% of them are women. And... None of them are doing it through orthodox ways. If you want to be a proper astrologer with lots of nice certificates and qualifications and to learn everything thoroughly and properly, then go to the Faculty of Astrological Studies. They're the best in the world at giving people diplomas and teaching them how to do astrology absolutely properly. And I thoroughly recommend them. They're a bit dry. But if you want to embrace a little bit of magic and stimulus and novelty and originality and excitement and adventure and a little bit of spooky stuff as well and and to take a few chances and to live a little bit on the edge then teach yourself and learn from your own experiences and keep practicing knowing that you'll get it wrong a lot of the times but the more you practice the more you'll get it right and that your reason is not to make money and it's not to become egotistic or powerful, and it's not to get your name in lights, it's to help other people know themselves a lot better. And of course, if you become a better person as a result, great. And if you happen to make some money out of, out of doing readings for people, which I'm finally doing after 40 years of hard graft, great. 
just when I'm getting ready to retire. The point of all this is, if you study astrology long enough, you recognise that it's not a science, it's not an art, it's unlike any other form of self-acquired knowledge, self-reflective consciousness. It not only gives you an insight into yourself, it gives you insight into others and the world. It makes you an expert at pattern recognition. And it gives you the ability to empower others to empower themselves. Astrologers should be catalysts. And it's such an honour and a privilege to be able to help other people empower themselves into becoming good astrologers. I still say it, astrology should be taught in schools because what a world we would have within two generations if that were the case. Catch you later, world. Bye.